Hello, I'm Tom Bennett here at Wildlife Wonders, a couple of our animal ambassadors. This little guy here stands over seven feet at the hump. It's a dromedary camel. A dromedary is going to have one hump. Bactrians have two humps. He's a little interested in the camera there, but uh, he is just one of our many animal ambassadors. We've got over, I've got over 13 years of experience here. I've got a biology education degree, and you wouldn't believe some of the stuff we've seen with animals. And it's my privilege and my thrill to share this kind of stuff with you. Here at the zoo, I build things, I feed, I answer the phones, but the most important thing I do is teach. Teaching people to enjoy these special animals and realize why they're important to have in our world and what not only can they do for us, like these guys, you can ride them, you can drink their milk and all these things, but, but why is it important to share our, our, uh, our world with these animals and to preserve their habitat and their homes for future generations? Hello, I'm Tom Bennett here at our zoo at Wildlife Wonders in Georgia, and you'll probably recognize some of these guys, our camel friend here, that's Obadiah, and got some good old cows in the background there, but these guys are some of my favorite animals at the zoo. That is a royal Tibetan yak and that's a yak behind. Uh, but he, these guys are some of the most unique animals, actually relatives of the American bison, but also an animal that lives in the far northern reaches of this world, the, the way far northern reaches of our world. And I'm heading there in June to see these guys' cousins in the wild, heading to Ellesmere Island. Not only is the goal to see muskox and uh, caribou and uh, Arctic fox and all kinds of neat stuff, but also to be one of the only second person in the world that's climbed each of the Canadian high points. So the highest point in each Canadian province is a, it's kind of a special place, uh, so we get to see animals heading to one of the most remote places in the world. Uh, but obviously... So here we are in the den area of one of our most heavily armored and defended animals at our zoo. Check this guy out. He is an African crested porcupine. Looking pretty cute from this angle. With that, his crest up top on his head. But look at that side. This guy can fend away lions and cameramen with that uh, with those huge quills. Some of those quills at the base of his tail are over uh, over a half an inch across, size of my pinky finger, and are used to uh, to, to defend these outside ones. Are guard hairs not very sharp, but an excellent defense keeps him safe from pretty much anything. Uh, he is one of our animal ambassadors here. We go out and we teach people about these animals. Also part of our captive breeding program to uh, breed these guys for other educational facilities to teach people about them and the, uh, the importance of having them around as well. as These guys are African crested porcupines, one of the largest rodents in the world, believe it or not, similar to a mouse and rat in that they have ever-growing teeth. But one thing they've got that those mouse, mice and rats don't are those huge, monstrous quills. Some of those quills at the base of their tail are bigger around my, my pinky finger, and you do not want to be on the wrong end of those. Lions will come up to these guys and walk away once they see what they've got to contend with. Because look at that. Look at that. Nothing's getting in there uh, turned turn backwards. And they'll get together and uh, hang out and just kind of keep other, other uh, animals away. But, but uh, like you say, amazing little guys. Some porcupines, like our North American porcupines, are going to be tree climbers. These guys, excellent diggers. Burrowers spend all their time on the ground, can't climb at all. So uh, similar to our North American porcupine, but a very different animal. And I am about ready to, uh, to move away here before we get some, uh, some action. But uh, So a little bit more about me. I have a biology education degree from North Georgia College and State University. I've got over 13 years of experience here at the zoo working with over 400 animals, 100 different species on a daily basis. And that's just uh, what we see here all the time. And we go out and visit with animals. Uh, you wouldn't believe the things I've seen out there in my travels all over Canada, North America, and other parts of the world as well. Seeing animals like this in some of the Canadian provinces where we are climbing. I am only one of two people in the world that as of next June will have been to the highest point in each of the Canadian provinces. And uh, seen amazing things all over there. And you are chewing on me, little girl. This is, uh, this is Tabitha. She's, she's just grooming me. She's got a, a, a tongue-like sandpaper. Good day, mate. Tom Bennett back again here with some of our Australian friends. And this guy is a red kangaroo. Being a little bit wary of me. is kind of checking me out. Luckily, he's not aggressive because the kickboxing thing is something these guys do. Not so much as a defense, mostly just to protect their ladies. And this guy has those huge big feet. And better than being a good defense for kicking, their main defense and the best thing they do is jumping that whole body is built around jumping its huge feet and its huge legs for power, his long tail for balance, 
and it acts like a spring behind him. It bounces up and down and helps him jump even farther. These guys can jump 40 to 45 miles per hour, clearing 20 to 25 feet in a single bound. And when they're going that fast, they're not using any more energy than I do when I'm just strolling along a sidewalk. Hey, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer here because one of the things you want to notice is we said this is a red kangaroo. While his coat does have kind of a reddish tinge, he gets that from under his chest. As I try to get him to stand up here, because he, under his chest he's got this kind of pinkish red tinge. And that is the reason their namesake is the red kangaroo. Uh, he's, he's being a little bit wary. Now, being a boy, he does not have a pouch. He doesn't have a pouch. Now, he's being a little cornered, so I'm going to let him kind of move off the other way, and I'm going to come around this way. We don't, want to, we don't want to scare him, but hopefully I can get him a little bit closer so you can see some of the... Uh... Oh, my goodness! So this is my big old girl. She's a little heavier than she was when we had her in a pouch, but she weighs, oh, right like about 80 pounds. So we've got some big male red kangaroos at our zoo, but this is one of our females, Abigail. And being a female marsupial, of course, she has a pouch. Her pouch is on her belly. It's kind of all covered up with fur, so you can't really see it. But that pouch is where they carry their babies. When they're born, they're the size of the end of your pinky finger, not much bigger than a bean. And when they are born, they crawl into mom's pouch and they hang out there. That's where the milk is, and they're completely undeveloped. Four or five months later, they come out, start looking around. So uh, she is also a, a great jumper, like all of our kangaroos here at our facility. Not quite as, as good a jumper as the big males will be, but this, uh, this girl can really move, outrun anything that's going to try and catch her. You notice, I don't know if you're close enough to see this little shaking she's doing. It kind of looks like she may uh, have had too much caffeine or something there, but that's actually a normal greeting from kangaroos. It's called tintabulation, and that shaking kind of uh, just is it's kind of the greeting thing. You know, they don't come up to a kangaroo and sniff each other's butts like a dog would. They put their noses up to each other and do the shaking thing, and that's kind of just their way of communicating, saying, hey, I'm, I'm okay. Might be a little, you know, wary of me, because she knows I'm not a kangaroo, but Abigail's a, a good friend of ours and a great animal ambassador here at Wildlife Wonders. <laughs> just told him a funny joke. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. I'm here with one of my Southern Bayou friends. This is Cajun, and he is a resident here of the state of Georgia, living a little bit farther south than our facility here at Wildlife Wonders, but he is an American alligator, and as you can tell, he's not a particularly happy camper right now. He's got his mouth open there. We call that gaping. It shows off his big, beautiful teeth. He's got over a hundred teeth in his mouth, and those teeth can do a lot of damage. He's got but the other end is actually very powerful as well. You see that tail? That helps him to swim. Big web feet. All these things make him an amazing predator. One of the most powerful, best hunters in the world. He's our little American alligator friend. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short glimpse of our uh, lives here at Wildlife Wonders and some of our animal ambassadors. We've enjoyed sharing them with you, and uh, we've got many years of experience traveling all around the globe. Hopefully we can share that with you and with uh, all of your viewers and audiences.